right, you puny humies. To celebrate the new Orc Codex, we's baiting some proper bully boys, the Mega Knobs. So get ready for war, and let's do some of it. So here we have the Orc Mega Knobs box. You get three Mega Knobs and a Grut Boiler in this kit. And there's several ways you can build it. You can build a Big Mech and just the normal Mega Knobs. There's also several weapons, options, claws, guns. Uh, in this case, we want to use the Kill Saws. So it's quite a few pieces on each sprue. You just clip them all off and follow the instructions to put all the body parts legs, arms, heads and weapons together. Just use a blunt knife to clean away any mold lines and I use Tamiya Extra Thin Cement so you just apply some to all the contact points and then stick the two parts together until they bond. Just do that for all of the parts. Some of the parts, especially these little side pieces, you have to sort of uh, push them in a little bit to get them to fit properly. And once you're done, and it looks like this, I'm going to paint the heads separately and I'm also not going to glue the weapons onto the arms because they have these little pegs that they can just slot in and out of. So I'm going to undercoat them in Wraithbone and first thing I'm going to do is the skin. So I'm going to use Plague Bearer Flesh to give kind of an undertone to the skin. So I just go around and paint all the bits there. This gives me a common tone that I can then use other colors on to give sort of a varying flesh tones while still keeping them somewhat uniform in appearance. So I'm going to use Creed Camo Militarum Green and I'm also going to use Contrast Medium to vary the colors, uh, the intensity of those uh, colors. So I just go around and paint over the Plague Bearer flesh in my choice of colors. So once that's done, I'm going to use some neutral kind of colors to do their pants. Uh, one of these guys I decided should be wearing blue jeans, so leave it in blue for him. Um, so just go around and do their pants in these kind of sort of neutral colors. And then I'm gonna use Wraithbone to go and clean up all of the overspills um, that I had. Uh, particularly for places I'm going to paint blue. So Techless Blue is my base colour for the Death Skulls blue that I use for a lot of my orcs. So just go around and base paint all of the armour plates that I want to um, end up blue there. Make sure that um, all of the other parts that I'm painting separately. So I'm going to pick out uh, some parts on their head and uh, a lot of the plates on their weapons as well. So just go and uh, be patient, go through um, and paint all of those. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dry brush some Lawthorn Blue over that just to give a bit more of a contrast and highlight for my next paint, which is Talisar Blue. So I apply this onto all of the blue pre-painting that we've done and it really ends up being a very vibrant blue that I like for my Death Skulls. Um, for contrast paints, I find just doing sort of one or two panels at a time helps get a smoother application than just trying to rush and do everything at once. So next up, I'm going to use um, some secondary colors. The first one is Apothecary White to just go around and paint some plates um, in colors other than blue. Uh, next up is Blood Angels Red. Uh, I try to be fairly random with the application of these secondary colors just to break up the blue a little bit. Uh, this one is Black Templar, so just gonna do this boy's gob in Black Templar. And then just a small amount of Creed camo. Uh, next up I'm gonna use Black Legion to go through and paint all of the parts that I'm subsequently going to paint in metallic colors. So again, just be patient and um, get through all of those. I find that um, this gives a much better effect than just painting the metallics 
directly over the wraith bone or whatever other color that you had undercoated with. So once that's done, I'm going to use lead belcher mainly to paint the metal parts. So just go through and pick out all of the parts you want in lead belcher. And I'm fairly random with my application of colors. I'll, as a general rule, I do mostly lead belcher and then the other metallic colors in smaller quantities. So I'm going to use some Balthazar gold as well to do sort of a bronzy kind of color. Uh, I'll pick out some parts in there. Um, the only rule I really have is sort of any of the harder metal parts like the uh, rods for the pistons. I try and keep lead belcher, um, but other than that, it's kind of orky technology and engineering, so it doesn't have to make much logical sense. Um, then Screaming Bell, I'm just going to pick out some coppery type of pieces like these pipes uh, and just some smaller pieces. Uh, don't forget to do the parts that we're sub-assembling, so this boy's got some iron teeth and all of the uh, chain axe kind of parts on the arms uh, do the same thing there. Next I'm going to use Agrax Earthshade to shade all of those metallics. Most people use Nolm Oil when they're shading their metals. Uh, for my orcs I like to have sort of a pitted, greasy, kind of dirty look so I use Agrax Earthshade instead and I think it gives a good look for them. The next thing we're going to do is use some Necron Compound just to just lightly dry brush uh, some of the metal pieces. You can do the same with the original colors from the non-silver metals. Next up, I'm going to use all of my blacks and browns and I'm going to start filling in some of the details on particularly the back of these Mega Numps. I've got just an absolute forest of pipes and hoses. So going to do uh, a lot of random uh, choices of colors for all of those. Um, you don't have to go quite as wild as I did, but uh, I like having a really random uh, mix of colors. There's also some leather straps and pieces of cloth, especially on the front of these models and holding the pipes together. Then I'm going to use all of my bright colors to do the same thing but with all of the cables so these thinner tubes here and i just try to be fairly random with the application of those i'm also going to paint you know some of the switches and dials there's so much detail on these mega knobs that you can really go as wild or as constrained as you like you could just paint them all one or two colors, but I just go through and randomly pick out as many different colors as I can on the models. I really like the brightness, all the pops, all the different kind of wild colors there. So next I'm gonna use some purple and pink colors to paint the inside of their mouths. So this one is Shyish purple for his uh, gums. And then originally I was gonna use um, Sigvald Burgundy, but I ended up doing Blood Angels Red for his tongue. So next, some Skeleton Horde for all the bone type parts. So there's a few of those floating around these models. These skulls hanging off the front of this mega knob and there's some teeth um, either on their fronts or also um, you know, in their mouths. So just pick all those in Skeleton Horde. Try to get a bit darker towards the base of the tooth. And then finally I'm going to use some white to fill in their eyes. Just be careful with a fine uh, brush tip there. And then going to use some Blood Angels Red to go in and fill in the eyes. For Orcs I don't worry about painting the pupils in, just the red is fine. So once we've finished that we can varnish them and stick them on bases and we're done. Uh, the Mega Knobs are one of my favorite kits. They're just so full of detail and character and they'll make an excellent addition to any wire. So I hope that helps and get out there and spread glory for Gork and more.